Hey, Artie here from Barn Mills. Lenny is actually going to be giving this tour here today, but I thought I'd just introduce you to the outside of the station here at Barn Mills. Uh, this station was uh, reproduced in 2005 from the original on the Sandy River and Rangeley Lakes Railroad, which was a two-footer up here in Maine. And the station itself is where we do all of our production work. Anything from laser cutting to metal casting to packaging to advertising and the rest of it. And this is just something we thought you might like to see. Now, it's not the only building that we use for the, that we use for the company because there's so much more involved okay, in that. this is one of our outbuildings, one that you're not likely to, likely to know anything about. But we have so much in the way of packaging, boxes, whether they're plastic packaging or cardstock or a combination of both, that as you can see here in the window, this place is just jammed full of boxes and packaging materials. A quick look inside will show you exactly what we cannot fit in the railroad station. As a utility building, this place is, in, is not incredibly well lit, but anything from our boxes, just like this, and how many of you have seen these things? We print them by the thousands. Uh, to uh, our packaging for our kits, to any kind of exterior packaging, rolled packaging, anything that has to be used in the shipping area of our railroad station is actually kept out here and starts out here before entering the building. Welcome to Bar Mills. Come on inside. As you enter the station, uh, the first thing you're greeted with is our 17-foot S-scale railroad. As you can see, we're not just people throwing things in a box, we're also modelers as well. Along with, to the right here, many of our HO scale, O scale, N scale dioramas. Uh, as you'll notice throughout this tour, there are shelves everywhere. Uh, again, we might look like a railroad station, but we're not selling train tickets. <laughs> so therefore we need to use every square inch of space that we can. Welcome to the wall of mugshots. Uh, you should uh, recognize many of these characters. Uh, generally, when we create a new structure or a new product, we tend to kind of have a theme, you know, we're telling a story, and oftentimes we'll end up having a custom drawn character to kind of help tell that story for the packaging and, you know, appearances, instructions, and things like that. Um, you'll see four fingered Tonys, um, Merle from the original one kit who uh, tends to make um, appearances throughout different structures. My favorite, Sweaty Betty's. And then a gentleman long since passed, Mortimer Stiff. Every great idea starts somewhere, right? Well, this is where our great ideas start. Uh, this is the main office here at the station. Um, this is where we uh, handle all of our customer service, all of our shipping, um, you know, uh, when we're designing new structures, you know, working through ideas, all of our ads, advertisements, um, just talking to you on the phone. This is where we're at uh, when we're doing all those different things. As you can see over here, this is Nancy. She's here Monday through Friday, uh, 7 a.m. till 7 p.m., depending on time of the year, uh, trying to take care of customer service and shipping and just trying to take care of everything that we do here. Kind of keeps everything running for us. Okay, walking into the next portion of the station, um, as I said earlier, there are shelves everywhere. Um, uh, we, we've actually built a lot of custom, <laughs> custom furniture uh, to kind of help us put things everywhere. Um, as you notice over here, we've got some of our um, previous uh, limited run Christmas kits. Uh, this here is from uh, last December, Cigar Corner. Then below it, we have Dancy, uh, Delancey Street. And then over here, we have Queen City. Now these here actually sit upon a fairly new addition for us. If you've been to our website recently or, you know, really paid attention to us at all, you'll know that we now carry our Woodland, our woodland Scenics figures. Um, we've got uh, tons and tons of the Woodland Scenics figures and like everything else, we had to figure out a place to put it. We'll walk back here. If we pan the camera down slightly, um, some of our longtime customers might actually recognize these here. Uh, these are the original dioramas uh, that we used 20 years ago. Wow, 21 years ago, long time ago. Uh, this here is uh, a diorama of our one kit. And then on the other, other side here, we have the original diorama of our billboards. Um, while we are definitely known for structure kits now, 
21 years ago, we were known for billboards, and this is actually how we got our start. This room here, uh, like so many of the rooms here at the station, is kind of a multi-purpose room. Along the walls, uh, the going theme, shelves and shelves and shelves. Uh, this is where we keep all of our N-scale stock. If you'll notice, each uh, shelf has a kit number, a kit name, and then generally how many kits we can fit on that shelf. As you'll notice, uh, some of the kits here are a little low. Uh, again, thank you. Uh, you know, we have been so tremendously busy, and again, we appreciate the support. And if we pan around here, we'll see even more shelves. Uh, again, uh, this here is HO scale. So when we run out of a product or we start getting low on a product, what we'll do is one of the gentlemen here, Bruce, will actually start pre-production. What this is, is this tells me what the kit is, how many we're gonna do of that structure, and then inside is all the metal castings, the uh, wooden sticks, all the different uh, ancillary things that go inside that box and burst out at you when you open that box up. Welcome to the heart of Bar Mills. Um, the great ideas happen in the office. Uh, the packaging and things like that happen other places, but this is where all of our raw material becomes the, eventually becomes the kit that you have in your box. We're cutting uh, many different types of basswood. We are cutting and etching cardstock for your roofs, things like that. And then we also cut three or four different sizes of plywood. As a matter of fact, one of the machines is done. I'm gonna step over here, I'll show you how the machine works. As I said, these are 50 watt CO2 laser tubes. This, this machine here runs a 12 by 24 inch bed. And all that means is we've got 12 inches by 24 inches of actual cutting surface. And the way this machine works is behind the machine is a CO2 laser tube. Now through a series of uh, multiple mirrors, it's actually shot out through the back into a lens and down to a lens carrier, which then shoots the material down to, uh, shoots the lens down to the material. Like I said, we cut many different types of materials and thicknesses of materials. Each material has its own cut settings. It's kind of like what I call its own recipe. Um, you know, some materials, thinner basswoods are gonna cut much faster than a 1 8 inch piece of plywood. Uh, wonderful machines, very reliable machines. Uh, these machines at this point are about 20 years old, but they are the best of the best for what we do. Next up on the shop tour is details. One thing about our kits is details, details, details. Whether you, you purchase a basic structure or you're purchasing a, a limited run Christmas kit, details are one thing that we always try to go a little extra that extra step to make every structure, you know, kind of tell a story. Uh, the details are just as important as the paint, the glue, everything else. What this is, is this is a production mold of an HO scale wooden barrel. What will happen is we'll start out with one individual piece, we'll have that handcrafted for us, and then we'll send that out. We'll have a mold very similar to this made, except that mold has one piece of that one casting. Then I'll take that mold, spin that 20, 30, 40 times, send that back to our mold maker, and then this is what I get in return, a production mold. Uh, generally, this casting here, when we use that in an HO scale structure, we're throwing three, four, five in each package. So if I had to spin that one mold that many times for each single kit, we would be back here forever. So all I do is drop this mold in the machine, Lock the lid down and drop the top. Grab my trusty gloves here. Drop the metal in the top. And count to five. Once the mold is done, I pull the mold out of the machine. Pull the top off. And I've got brand new HO scale barrels. Now, as you can see, this is just one barrel. 
um, you know, uh, we, we're slowly but steadily transitioning to more resin than metal. Um, you know, a larger barrel pile, uh, you know, uh, things like that, a, a garbage cans, things like that. They're they're much better in resin. So we've kind of shifted away from the metal. Um, some of our uh, newer kits actually come with 3D printing as well. Um, as the times change, we've tried to change with the times, and we are definitely a company that tries to embrace new technology. Welcome to the next room in the station. Uh, we've got a lot of rooms for a little station. Uh, this here is where we keep all of our plastic windows and doors. A lot of our HO scale kits include uh, usually a mixture of plastic and wood laser depending on the structure. Um, so we naturally we have to have a place to keep all those. Up here we actually have a tub for each window and door that we use in our structures. And then along the bottom here, oh, that's interior bracing, we have more tubs of all the back stock. Uh, generally, every single window and door, we keep three, four, five thousand individual pieces of that window in stock at a time. Um, generally, when we're running an HO kit, and uh, you know, say there's we're using this window, uh, which actually is in the Idaho Hotel window. Uh, this window, we're putting 24 windows in that structure. So we need to have all of those windows, doors, and miscellaneous things in house all the time. Next, we're going to shift over here. Uh, this here is actually Bruce. Um, He's generally in here uh, 24 hours a day. He tends to sleep under the desk. Um, he's the gentleman who packages all these uh, windows, doors packages, the metal casting packages like I showed you earlier. Um, this, this is where all As that is done. As with our resin castings, we also have a similar idea with our metal castings. This is our metal casting map. And as you'll notice, it's a, a sheet with many different metal castings and then numbers above them. What those numbers do is they correspond with the rubber mold in the spin casting room as I showed you earlier. So that if I need um, a boat or a gas pump or you name it, I can come in here, I can find it on the map, look at the number, walk in there and know exactly what mold I need as opposed to digging through say 225 different molds. If you're familiar with our structure kits, the one thing you'll notice is every single structure kit tends to come with everything you need to complete the structure, shingles being one of those. While we do offer pre-printed, pre-weathered shingles in a couple different styles, we also have our standard shingles uh, roofing material that we place in every structure kit. The way that we create those is this machine here. Uh, this is a kind of a funny looking laser tube. A laser machine it's very different than the machines that I showed you earlier the way that this machine works is it is a fixed laser machine what happens is where the other machines cut a 12 by 24 surface this machine here will only operate a very small 6 by 4 surface so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna manufacture one sheet of HO scale rolled roofing with nail holes as you can see right now, it's actually etching the nail holes into the sheets. And now it's kiss cutting that paper. What this is, is this is essentially a two ply paper. It is a piece of paper with a sticky back. And what I'm able to do with this machine is to cut and etch the top portion of the material without cutting through the top so that when we want to, after we're done painting and uh, detailing these shingles, I can pull it off strip by strip. Uh, believe it or not, we actually have a second floor. Um, as I said, the outside may look like a railroad station, but the inside, well, you know, we really try to use every square inch. Um, we don't have an uh, elevator, unfortunately, but we do have a nice set of stairs. As we walk up the set of stairs, you'll notice here on the right is our O scale woodland scenic figures that we offer through the website and then along the other side we have uh, many different um, art and uh, you know uh, promotional items that we use at shows to kind of show uh, you know what we're coming up with uh, just a representation of all the many different structure kits that we've done throughout the years come on up one of the most important aspects of a 
producing one of our kits is uh, basically us trying to make sure that we don't forget something in the box. Uh, one of the more inventive ways that we've created to be able to do that is what we call a kit map. What this is, is this is an actual physical representation map of every single part that goes into that structure kit. What this allows us to do is when we decide we need to um, make more of a new product, uh, this one here happens to be Noah's Not, I'm able to go to our selection of maps, lay that on the table, and then I can start laying out the different parts that we have. Uh, like I said earlier, every part or every product generally has a few extra parts from the last production run. So I'm able to kind of fill in the slots and then I can count each part and know that if we're gonna make 24, 36, 48 of that, I need, uh, you know, 48 sets of uh, the uh, glass. I need, um, you know, 10, 10 of this, 20 of that. You get the idea. As with the windows and doors, uh, like here, We've got other drawers. These drawers are where we keep all of our resin castings. As I spoke earlier, we're slowly shifting more towards resin. And when we do res uh, our resin runs, we tended to have to do uh, a large amount at one time just because of the production process. So we have to have a place to keep all of that back stock. While these also go in many different uh, structure kits, we also sell them individually as I showed you earlier. So again, we just have to have a place to keep all this stuff. If you followed our videos for any length of time, uh, this room here may actually be familiar. Um, originally, when we first built the station, this was just an empty, cold, dark closet. And then we had the bright idea of, hey, let's, let's show people what we do and do videos, do clinics, things like that. So we transformed that room into what we call the media room. Um, at this point, we've shifted the media room to a different area, so we transform this room once more into a kind of a, an upgraded storage room. Uh, we keep a lot of our O-scale resin castings, uh, things like that in here. Uh, we keep our drawer of maps, as I just showed you. We also keep extra HO castings. Um, this is a kind of a catch-all room, but a very important room for organization. Welcome to the next portion of our shop tour here. Uh, back here is what we call the shipping area. Um, realistically, this area is kind of a catch-all area. We do packaging, we do shipping, we keep all of our castings in our many different scales. Um, this is kind of a, a room that, um, you know, we do everything in. Uh, step on in. Uh, this is Ken. Say hi, Ken. Hi there. Uh, as you can see, what he is doing here is patch packaging our Instafence. So what happens is we package all of those into these nice, neat little plastic containers. Everything is loaded into this plastic container, then brought over to the machine here. May I have one of those? And then we take these very cool backing pieces, drop that in there, slide it in, and wait for the noise. And ta-da, we have packaged Instafence. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the tour and kind of gotten a little bit of an idea of how we do everything here. Um, it's been uh, wonderful to show you around and, uh, you know, thanks for stopping by. I got to get back to work.